Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and this is another StarCraft 2 England cast. Now today guys, I've got a best of one game, it is between IP's Satini, who is the red Terran player in the top left, he's playing up against Toxic, the blue Protoss player in the lower right position. The map is Antigua Shipyard, it is going to be a TVP and I am so excited about casting this, it should be really really good. I I really am, like TVP as a matchup is really growing on me. There was once a point when I didn't really like it, I thought it was a bit weird, it was really confusing and I don't know why, it's because I didn't play Terran or Protoss, I'm, I'm a Zerg player on the ladder and things like that so obviously it was kind of a bit like I couldn't relate to it in any way or really I didn't have as much of an understanding but I've been casting it so much recently that I'm really really liking how the matchup plays out and I mean specifically in kinds of more of the late game in really the Protoss's decision making in when to make tech switches between High Templar and Colossus which way they go when they start integrating both because I've seen so many Protoss players actually lose games essentially because they focus on either getting too many Colossus and no High Templar or they kind of get a lot of High Templar and then are forced to make Archons and it doesn't really work against the Terrans so we'll wait and see how this all plays out, how Toxic deals with that. Satini so obviously Gonna get Stim back, gonna get Marines, Marauders, Medivacs, and then just try and roll stomp his opponent before those AoE damaging units do come out for the Protoss player. In terms of openings, well, it's gonna be a command center first by the looks of things because there's nothing else. There would have been a barracks down already, obviously up to 300 minerals. We should see an SCV pulled sometime soon. There we go. Not forced cross spawns, obviously, because it is just the louder version of the map. We've got the gateway and gas on its way down for Toxic right now, and I'm really hyper at the moment because. Well, I'm going to be honest, I went out clubbing last night and they played Gangnam Style and it was so good because literally it was the most hilarious thing. Every single bloke in the club apparently knew every word to the song, knew every dance move and there was literally just like half a club full of women looking really confused how all of these men just suddenly became the least attractive things on the planet to them. And that really was a beautiful moment and then it, and then it finished and we all had to go back to normal. And it was a bit of a shame, but we all went and got a drink after that, so it was fine. Anyway, back to StarCraft, rather than my weird exploits of cool Korean pop music. We do have the Cybercore on its way down, the gas out, everything fairly normal. We've got a double barracks, and one barracks getting hidden, actually. I don't know if that has been scouted. If we look at the vision, no, it hasn't, so no idea that second barracks is there. I think that's a good move by Satini, just makes him a little bit safer. That probe, the probe stays alive, but is now walled in the base, so we'll never know about that barracks. And, well, we've got the expansion coming down here. And what we could see, obviously, by getting that second rack really, really quickly is some additional marine pressure and also the ability to just be a bit safer as well because the one thing that Satini will be worried about is a big gateway push or one base play, which is not, of course, what Toxic's going for because, as you can see, the Nexus already on its way down there. That probe is still happily chilling. Not going to be doing so for much longer, though, because that marine is on its way out and the first kill of the game, I do believe, is about to go to the Terran. That poor probe, look at it trying to get out of there. Just going any which way it can. That is that is some beautiful micro on that probe, but it's gonna it still survives one HP. Go on probe, run away probe, run away, run away! Get a good look at those gas timings. Yeah, you go probe, that's what we like. Anyway, down at the Protoss base we've got the stalker out, we've got the pile on the Nexus, more gateways being added on. Three gateways Fairly good, isn't it? You get two bases, three gateways, you've then got room to tech up if you want to, get a robotic facility. I mean, what we could actually see is some kind of blink stalker play. I think that'd be quite good on, obviously, Antigua, because you've got this little shelf bit. You would need the observer out, though, just to get a little bit of vision. So I reckon something like a kind of blink stalker with an observer play is going to be really quite likely. And it would be really potent, actually, because Satini did go very bold. Of course, there's. Wow. Throwing down a third command center. That little look there was like, is there any gas? And it's like, no, there isn't any gas at all yet. Just going like, command center, barracks, barracks, command center. Because that is how you do it when you're hardcore. And it's going to be a bit of a bold move, actually. Because, of course, Stim going to be massively delayed now. But economically, of course, Satini's going to be in a great spot. These Marines just walking across the map being like, hey, Marines, they're good units. Up, up. I'm just going to come and attack you. The bunker being thrown down as well. More bunkers being added on because, of course, without Stim, a big gateway push would wreck everything. Of course, the Marines themselves, though, just running along. We do now have that tech lab finally being added onto the barracks, so things aren't too crazy anymore. It is just going to be quite delayed. We do have the natural base up for Toxic, who is also getting up. That Twilight Council, a fourth gateway, and that really screams to me, I'm going Blink Stalkers. 
and I get to say how right I am and I I do promise hand on heart I have not watched this replay before of course it's possible they won't go for blink stalkers now and I will just look completely stupid there we go blink is researching huh <sighs> seriously there's this beautiful moment when there's this tiny possibility you could still be wrong but you've really committed to basically saying how right you're going to be where you suddenly get that panic like oh dear what if I'm not right? But that's beside the point. That is not going to be the case here. But uh, to be honest, there's going to be big trouble trying to get those stalkers through this front door. So really needs that robotic facility down. Literally on its way there. That's perfect. With that SCV coming to scout. Literally, the SCV should be able to see everything because so far there is nothing. Ah, there is a stalker. That one stalker could stop the SCV. That would be good times. Obviously, the third orbital command is now down. A factory is probably being thrown down there for no other purpose other than getting a starport on add ons. These four stalkers, they're boldly going forward. We do have the pylon as well now for another forward warp in of blink stalkers. This is going to be something quite tough to hold because all of the defense is situated about the front of the natural base. Stim is not even half done yet. That means this push should do quite a a bit amount of damage and it's going to be really difficult for Satini to hold it. I mean he will be able to especially as these numbers of units start coming up but what I expect to see is that observer being used just to basically allow the stalkers to blink up, deal some damage, they'll come around here, they'll blink down here, do some more damage and then just walk out following all of the infantry and really not taking much damage. That's how I would play it out anyway. We do have a forge on its way now as well as more pylons. In terms of the Terran base, of course Stim is now three quarters done for the moment. We do have the starport on its way out as well as reactor there so they'll get switched over and the third base is now going to move down. That is just such a quick expansion timing. These stalkers are going to run out the way. I don't know if they were spotted by Satini yet. But what I do know is that there is one beautiful observer which is going to see everything. But the scan goes off and ruins the day for Toxic. Oh, that was really unfortunate. By losing that observer, all of this play has now been shut down so hard, at least until another observer comes out. But for the moment, these stalkers are absolutely useless, doing nothing at all. And Satini will take no damage. And I mean, we're nearly coming, well, we're coming up 10 minutes into this game, and this is the first potential losses. Some good blink micro going on. A couple of stalkers are going down, though. The blinks could be better still. There's some good blinking. And in terms of the resources lost, that is going to come out very nicely for Toxic right now. Satini needs to be a bit careful. That factory coming to scout is not going to see the proxy pylon. That is going to be awkward on its own. We've got Bling Forward there trying to pick off that marine as best it can. We do have some stalkers picking off a factory because a factory is a really, really expensive way of scouting, but essentially in order to get your starport, we do have more barracks being added on now. The first medevac's just popping out. We've got more add-ons coming down pretty much everywhere we can. And here comes the stalkers. What are they going to go for? They are going for the add-ons. They can do some good damage. And quickly here we see Satini trying to pull back all of those units. Gets another add-on picked off very, very quickly indeed. May go again still. This is beautiful play right now out of Toxic. He is absolutely dominating and taking no damage. If he gets a starboard as well, that would be brilliant. And of course, Satini can't engage head on yet because he just does not have enough units there. The medevacs would help. But with Bling, this could just be too easy. And there is a stim forward. One stalker goes down. The rest do manage to survive. But behind this, of course, we have had a lot more warp ins. Another wave of zealots coming in now. Anyway, the warp prison there. Storm being researched. High Templar should be out on the field shortly. It may even be just a couple of units in here for defense as we speak. And well, here comes the fun. The missile tower is coming down, trying to deny that observer. The starport is probably going to get picked off, though, very easily. We do have the missile tower taken down. And well, this is just great play by our Protoss buddy. He is just doing so much damage using the vision gained by the Observer. He may even get a barracks kill. That would be absolutely beautiful without taking hardly any losses. If we look here, this is so one-sided in terms of the resources lost. It's absolutely sick. And another Stalker with like no health does manage to get away. If we take a look here, we've got, well, some Zealots have been dropped into the mineral line. This is doing damage, damage, damage everywhere. And, well, as you can see, the work account is in Satini's favor at the moment. But these Zealots, they're like, no, I don't like equal work accounts, so we're just going to start dealing damage everywhere. High Templars morphing in here for Toxic. And, well, the 2 2 upgrades are on the way for Satini. So here is 1 1 against. 1-0. Now, the reason the Protoss player has, of course, gone for the armor upgrade is because it's better against Terran since most of their DPS comes from Marines. 
Marines attack very fast with low damage per hit, so reducing that is a big influence in faction. Now, of course, here we've got all of the Terran army completely out of position. It's got such a long way to go to get back, and we are going to see some more SCBs picked off. Perhaps these Stalkers just fighting in the choke point, using their better angle of attack to deal as much damage as possible. Blink being utilized very effectively. The Medivacs, oh, the Medivacs going straight on top of the Stalkers, and the Stalkers can now just happily go and blink away. They're going to try and get a few more kills, but unfortunately, they have now been cornered by all of that Terran infantry, but that was some good damage. It has leveled up the terms of resources lost, but the work account still in Satini's favor, and this is all due to this third base. The third base is now up for Toxic, but he's not doing anything with it quite yet. So while it might seem that this game is very, very much Toxic being the aggressive, Toxic getting ahead, that is not the case at all, because economically, Satini is so, so good right now. When you factor in mules as well, if we just look at his income, He's, he's like getting two and a half thousand minerals mined a minute. That is absolutely mad. Those zealots are not able to do too much though at the moment. In terms of the resources, we also need to be careful that War Prism needs to get out of there. That could take big damage. Luckily, Toxid has noticed that. Some high Templar morphing in. And of course, that means one thing. That means storms. Two storms will kill SCVs. So we'll wait and see. But of course, the main base is now actually running pretty low on workers. So may not do that much. But Satini now moving across with what I can only describe as crazy numbers of marauders. He has got a grand total of 24 marauders, 21 marines, and 4 medivacs. That's up against 16 zealots, 5 stalkers, and 6 high templar. That war prism though is still sitting there. Storm will be ready any second, but there's not enough for it to deal damage in my opinion at that base anyway. There's of course missile tides down everywhere, so to be fair, we could actually see that war prism take big big damage unless it goes down to the third base which would be the perfect target but for the moment Satini he is gathering all of his units in the center of the map right now he is picking up a drop he's going to drop it to the third base but there is a handful of units moving across and we have seemed to have got toxic into a position of zealot archon he's kind of ended up here he doesn't have the robotics bay in order to get colossus out which is something he might want to consider doing soon those zealots do of course now have charge so they can start moving forward this drop is going to be absolutely devastating if it does manage to land but those Two photon cannons are going to pick off pretty much everything, but they're not. They're focusing the units, not the medevac. If they just had one more hit. Meanwhile, we've got these zealots picking off all of the reinforcements just so, so effectively. We've got the zealot drop into the main base, picking off so many workers. But the third base has now been left completely vulnerable. This is going to be absolutely traumatic for the Terran. So much damage will be done here. We should see some storms go off. I mean, I would use a couple of storms to kill that many workers. But still, those storms are clearly just being saved for when the reinforcements come. We have Satini still rallied to the center of the map. That's not going to help. There goes down the storm. Look at how much damage is being done here. A massive storm goes down on all of those units. Good splitting by Satini. That storm gets a couple of units as well. Now the two ghosts academies are getting taken down. That, of course, will prevent the upgrades. It will prevent the tactical nukes. And most importantly, it will prevent ghosts being made. Now we do have these zealots trying to rejoin their brethren right now. And Toxic is just looking to be in such a good spot. He's cleaned up that drop with the photon cannon and a couple of zealots and stuff. So he is looking fine. In terms of the well work account, it's now 28 to 46 in the Protoss' favor. Some more storms trying to go down. The zealots doing everything and anything they can, trying to run away. The Archon needs to stay up. Still more storms are hitting everywhere, but of course Marauders are good, strong units. The Archons being added in, though, are going to really, really help this Protoss army to do well. But of course, reinforcements are continually on their way. Some ghosts are now out, so EMPs are going to be devastating should they land and knock out those Protoss shields. And of course, the High Templar's energy. None of the Medivacs have enough energy to have feedback cast on them. And just still some bad rally points out of Satini. This, I have to say, really is a lesson of make sure you are always thinking about your rally points because otherwise, you could just lose units for nothing, and that is really what's allowing Toxic to engage more cost-effectively than his opponent, because his opponent is literally just throwing units at him. Now, we do have one unit getting picked off there that was just dropped on the shelf. It's probably from a drop, but, well, Satini, he's not in a good spot. His third base is re-landed now. He's got a lot of mules, but at the end of the day, he's 20 workers behind. That is pretty huge, and, well, there is still this big army knocking at his door in terms of the army. 
supply, 83 to 50, so 13 supplies, actually quite substantial. Storm is just hitting up everywhere, not too bothered how much damage they're doing at the moment, but there is some big, big storms right there, and that there is so much damage, the Marines get picked up, and this could be GG. Satini is at half the supply of his opponent, all of the Archons are up, all of the High Templar are there, and, well, a bit of possible BM coming down there from Satini about Storm being perhaps OP, but I thought Toxic played really well that entire game. He dominated at every point. His aggression early on was superb. Now, guys, three things. Subscribe. I get new top-level games up every single day of the week. Like the video because that'd be awesome, and leave a cool comment below. If you do those for me, that'd be great. And if you want any more StarCraft, flick over to my channel to watch my hundreds and hundreds of replays, and it will be awesome times. But most importantly, I hope you did enjoy, and I'll catch you again tomorrow. Bye for now.